morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Friday, January 17th, 2020. I am Dave Biddle. Very happy to be joined by Jonah Booker for his usual Friday visit. Jay Brook, let's start with uh, the Jameer Gibbs situation. Then we'll get to a lot of the interesting comments from Ryan Day about the 2020 team later in the show. But uh, focusing on Jameer Gibbs, uh, we've talked about him so much on the show. He was set to visit Ohio State. This weekend, he's actually going to come up tonight. You know, it's going to be a Friday, Saturday visit. Um, the Jameer Gibbs visit has been called off. Just what do you make of this situation, Jay Book? Yeah, I was a little surprised that they called it off at the last minute here. I mean, it was a an official visit that they had been working on for some time to try to get him up there to Columbus. But uh, I kind of su- suspected something was up. Uh, Ryan Day was asking this press conference earlier this week uh, in regards to the numbers and he uh, in the running back position, and he kind of uh, threw it out there that they probably wouldn't bring someone else in because of the numbers were so tight. So it, just with that, um, you know, I thought he was just kind of playing coy, but looking back at it, it makes sense now. Um, obviously, Gibbs is a very, very talented uh, prospect. Um, I know a lot of people are, have some angst in regard to the Ohio State uh, recruiting the running back position. They must feel really good about – uh, the room that they have, as well as adding Mayan Williams to that room. So I think uh, as, as for Ryan Day, sometimes you have to make the really tough decisions. Uh, it, it came down to a situation where uh, Ohio State refuses to oversign and they're not going to cut kids. So the way things have shaken out, um, they just felt like the numbers weren't going to uh, work out in their favor here. Yeah, you touched on it. I mean, the current running back room, um, you look at these guys um, – you know, Master Teague, he's going to have first crack at being the starter, you would think, being the backup this year, uh, this past season. And looking good. Everybody's down on Master Teague now, by the way, he finished the season. It's like, you know, he looked really, really, really good for most of the season. I'm, I'm certainly still high on Master Teague. There's things he can get better at. Obviously, he, his straight line speed's good. His, his lateral quickness can get better. I, I get all that, but I still like Master Teague a lot. I want you to comment on that. And, and some of the other guys in the room, um, you know, Marcus Crowley's coming off a knee injury. They're kind of hush-hush about it. Sounds like Probably he had some type of surgery on his knee, but it sounds like he will be ready by the start of camp, if not earlier. Steel Chambers is a guy they like. They were able to redshirt Steel Chambers. And Mayan Williams, um, maybe people are sleeping on him a little bit. Just your thoughts on if you think Master T can be a starting running back and the rest of those guys. Yeah, I thought it was interesting um, just going back to Ryan Day's press conference because there was so much that was said uh, during that during that conference. and. Uh, he was, you know, once again asked about the running back position, and he was kind of saying, yeah, that, that is a position that uh, we need to see what those guys are going to be able to do. He he acknowledged that Master T didn't look as great against some of the, the top-end competition in there. Obviously, J.K. got the bulk of the carries. The thing that you want to see is what, what Master T is going to look like when he's getting the lion's share. Um, anyone who you know knows football, plays football, knows that if you're going in there in spot duty and only getting five or six carries, it's really, really hard to find your groove as a running back. Um, the times that you know Master T did get in there, he showed some flashes. Obviously, you had to take into consideration he got in there in a lot of mop-up duty, and, and he was running over a lot of the uh, opposing team's second stringers as well. But I think Master Teague is going to be obviously a serviceable running back. I think he'll definitely be a thousand yard running back. But I have to tell you this, Dave. I had earlier this week, I had a 30 minute phone conversation with Randy Wade, Sean Wade's dad. And, uh, we've become good friends, you know, through Twitter or whatnot. And we were just talking about the, the team in the spring and, and some of his kids as far as, uh, Marcus Crowley and, uh, Tyreek Johnson that comes from the Trinity. Uh, down there in Jacksonville, and Randy Wade is really, really high. Obviously, he has his bias because of Crowley, but he thinks that he has the potential to be a next, the next star here. Um, and we talked about the kind of the, uh, you know, Master T's running style where he's more of a straight line guy, and he said, watch, trust me, once Marcus Crowley gets healthy, he's going to be the guy that gives you that element as far as the running back position, who's going to be able to make people miss in the open field. And he told me, he goes, Marcus Crowley was absolutely dominating top competition down there in Florida, and he was slept on. Um, The guy has shown that he has the ability to be a premier back. The thing that you 
uh, have to take into consideration is he's just he was just doing that um, as a pup. His body really hasn't developed, and once he really develops and he develops uh, that strength in the lower body that you need from the running back, he's going to be a heck of a prospect and a heck of a running back for the Buckeyes. He definitely looked good. I mean, he looked good as a true freshman when he was in there. Um, I mean, he was the state player of the year in the you know in the state of Florida. We all know how talent rich that state is. So uh, I love it. And uh, Randy Wade, if you're listening to this show, uh, thank you uh, for uh, if you had anything to do with Sean coming back. Thank you very much. Even if you didn't, thank you for raising such a, a good young man. We're happy to have Sean Wade back for another year in a Buckeye uniform. Um, let's just start right there. I feel like. Ohio State made out as well as they possibly could have, Jay Book, as far as losing guys early to the pros. I mean, there's no way. I mean, we all knew that Chase Young was going to leave early for the pros. You know, we all knew uh, Jeff Okuda was going to leave early. I'm talking before the season started. J.K. Dobbins, you know, we all knew he was going to leave if he had any type of good year. Turns out he had a marquee year. Only losing three early entry guys, I mean, that's as good as we could have hoped for. Absolutely. I mean, if, if you look at it, Ohio State roster was pretty much loaded with uh, a lot of freshmen and sophomores, and that uh, a lot of those guys um, that were upperclassmen there as far as the juniors were, are concerned, like you mentioned, losing three guys. I mean, usually you see a mass exodus from Ohio State's roster, especially in a season where they make it to the playoffs. So I think Ohio State made out well. I mean, obviously there's going to be some holes that need to be filled, from those upperclassmen, those guys that left early in the seniors. But just getting Sean Wade back in the fold is tremendous. I mean, you're, you're talking about having uh, a whole entire new secondary, but you're able to bring back a guy who's going to be a first-round pick at the cornerback position. Uh, I think it's, it's going to be critical for a lot of those younger guys um, to step up and show what they're made of. But I have confidence. I think Jeff Hackley did. This program a tremendous solid by getting meaningful reps with those guys. I mean, who would have thought Malik Hooker would have been getting uh, meaningful uh, snaps in the Big Ten Championship? And that just kind of tells you the development of those younger guys that someone like Malik Hooker in the when the Ohio State – or I'm sorry, Marcus, Marcus Hooker, my bad um, – always have his brother on my mind. But, yeah, just would, Marcus I would, Hooker. I would love to have Malik out there at any point. No, no, <laughs> yeah, but Marcus Hooker out there getting playing time in a, a critical game like that is meaningful reps with, for their development. So I, I think uh, Ohio State made out well when it comes to the guys leaving early. I think uh, it's going to be top to bottom once again, one of the – the strongest rosters in college football. It should be another Ohio State-Clemson matchup in the playoffs or the national championship if everything falls right. Yeah, getting the, you know getting Sean Wade back was the number one get, and then the three offensive linemen. I didn't, you know, I had a pretty good feeling that they were going to come back, but you just never knew. I mean, Thayer Munford, uh, Josh Myers, Wyatt Davis. I mean, getting those guys back is absolutely huge. Um, yeah, just just could not have worked out any better for Ohio State as far as guys leaving early. Um, so, you know, regarding Ryan Day's press conference the other day on Wednesday, and man, Ryan Day, t- so gracious with his time, sat there for over 40 minutes answering our questions, started off the press conference with a quick statement thanking us, thanking the local media. I mean, who does that? I mean, he, he's just he, he's just such a great guy. And my, I was mildly worried at this time last year, is he too nice? Now we know he's not too nice. You know, he's just a good guy who, he's got that tiger inside of him, though. But um, the number one topic at the press conference, it kept being, it, you know, early on, it was just kind of brought up once or twice, and it kept being brought up was Corey Dennis being promoted to quarterback's coach. Um, you know, Ryan had a lot to say about that. He's very high on Corey Dennis. Um where do you come down on that? Are you are, are you completely all in with the Corey Dennis promotion to quarterbacks coach? I am, and if you listen to Coach Day's reasoning behind it, it makes complete sense. Um, obviously, Corey is a coach that is on the rise. Um, he worked his butt off there. Um, when Dwayne Haskins was the quarterback, he basically said Corey Dennis was like his personal quarterback coach. And Ryan Day made a great point. You look at the quarterback uh, room at Ohio State, they're doing some outstanding things. They're developing their guys. And Corey Dennis knows that system. You bring in an outside guy, they're going to have their opinions on how they want to run things. And Ryan Day, being a quarterback coach himself and the offensive guru, 
He wants his quarterbacks to play a certain way. He doesn't want to deviate from what's working. Corey's going to be able to uh, continue to that he wants. The, obviously, Corey's going to have a lot to prove. He's going to have his uh, few skeptics out there that is, that's going to say the only reason he got the position is because he's uh, kin to Urban now. Um, and I, I'm not buying that. I think Corey earned the job. I trust Brian Day uh, 100%. If he believes that guy has the potential to be a heck of a coach, then I'm going to take his word for it. Because, I, like I said, at the time of the hire, if you look at what Ryan Day has done since he's taken over as the, as the coach at Ohio State, he has shown nothing but a ruthless mentality when it comes to coaches. I mean, he came in and took a blow towards the Urban's best man and, and best friend in Greg Schiano. He's not afraid to uh, call people out, you know, in a respectful manner, but at the same time, he's not going to put up for it, put up, any BS from his assistant coaches. So if you're not going to get the job done, Ryan Day has no qualms about sending you packing. And to me, that's the type of mentality that you want from your head coach. So when he does have that mentality when it comes to firing guys, you have to trust him when it comes to hiring guys. Very well said. Last topic, Justin Fields, the franchise. Um, as good as he was this year, as great as he was in 2019, you have to think he's going to be even better. He's only a first-year starter. Um, now he's going to be, you know, not only is he going to be a second-year starter, but he's in the same offense, you know, with Ryan Day, who does such a great job designing the offense and, you know, developing quarterbacks. And um, so, I, you know, and I don't know how much better Justin Fields can get, but you have to think he's going to get better in year two, um, you know, Coach Day talked a lot about that. He was asked about Fields' knee. He talked a good amount, a good amount about how, you know, it did affect him. He said the quote was, "It wasn't catastrophic, but it did affect him a lot." You know, toward the end of the year. Um, and but you know, then he was asked, you know, did he have a procedure on it after the season? Will he have a procedure done on it? You know, will he have surgery on it? And, and Day did not answer that question. Decided just he wasn't going to answer that. To me, that says a lot. That means they, um, that tells me he's going to. He probably did have some type of procedure or will. Just reading between the lines, just spitball in there, but. Uh, uh, but Coach Day is confident, Jay Book, that there's going to be no issues moving forward uh, with Justin Fields' knee. Uh, just unpack all that for me. What do you expect out of Justin Fields next year? Are we going to see an even better version of number one next year? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I said on our message board, I'm putting it in the bank right now at minimum of 4,000 passing yard season. And if they decide to utilize his leg, easily 400, you know, 500 on the ground. I mean, you're talking about a guy who came into Ohio State um, and played as a first-year guy and made, made, and made it to New York. I mean, Ohio State playbook is not easy. Dwayne Haskins has said that. He said – Dwayne Haskins said um, pretty much it took him a couple years to really get a grasp of what Ryan Day wanted to do schematically. And Justin Fields, you know, came up here and participated in spring football and even – and even Fields said that it took him pretty much until fall camp to kind of really get his mind around, you know, what they were trying to do as far as concepts and how to uh, read the defense amongst those concepts. So I think having that year under his belt and then another coming back for another spring is going to be tremendous. I truly believe Ohio State's offense uh, will be a, more of a pass-first offense uh, considering the running back situation. Uh, with, with J.K. Dobbins, you had a 2,000-yard running back. I don't think Master Teague is going to get those type of carries that J.K. had as many carries. I think he'll get some, and the younger guys will get some touches. But I think a, bo a lot of those carries that J.K. would have had will now be distributed to the passing game, especially when you look at the wide receiver position, because I look at the wide receiver position as one of the strongest position groups on the football team there the most explosive unit when it comes to speed and the potential for big plays. And you, you look at the way Justin feels through. I mean, the thing that really caught me off guard in Ryan Day's press conference is he said pretty much uh, leading up to the Big Ten Championship, Fields wasn't even practicing because of that knee. He, if Fields didn't have the drops in that Fiesta Bowl, you're talking about a guy who didn't even practice throwing for 400 yards against the number one pass defense in America in Clemson. And then he put up another, what, 299, 300 against Wisconsin in the Big Ten Championship. 
So you're telling me a guy that has a bum knee uh, and major part of his game is, uh, is killing people with his legs was able to still stand in the pocket and throw for over 600 yards in those two games with a, without practicing? That tells me right there that the ceiling is really high for this guy, and as long as he stays healthy, he should be back in New York again. And hopefully he wins it, yeah. I mean, if he stays healthy, yeah, I think there's no doubt he'll be in New York. And, you know, it's going to be him, Trevor Lawrence, and maybe uh, Chuba Hubbard's coming back for Oklahoma State. That surprised me. Um, yeah, it's going to be uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun to see in year two of Justin Fields, the franchise coming back for year two, and his final year in a Buckeye uniform, obviously. Uh, great stuff, as usual, from General Booker. That's why Jay Book is a fan favorite. Very easy to see why. Thank you very much, Jay Book, and thanks to our listeners out there for tuning into the show. Hope everyone has a great day and a great weekend. Let's try Buckeye Swag, best damn band in the land.